When you photograph, there are often situations like the situation there is right now, where there are differences in light and brightness, very big between different areas of the photo. When you're doing landscape photography, you have situations when you can use an anti-gradient filter. Those situations are when you have a straight horizon line and basically the, the photo is divided in two areas, the sky area and the foreground and the earth area. Now in those situations, yes, you can use an anti-gradiated filter to compensate for the brightness of the sky, but that is not always the case. Sometimes you have a tree in front of you, uh, maybe you are in a V-shaped valley, and in those situations you can't use an anti-gradiated filter because using that would affect the mountains, the trees, you would darken too much those elements. Each sensor from each camera has a different dynamic range and the dynamic range is the multitude of tones from dark to light that the sensor can capture in only one photo. There are situations when this difference between darkness and light is too big for the sensor to capture in only one shot. And in those situations, like photographing directly into the sun, for example, during sunrise or sunset, well, these situations require you to take multiple photos with multiple exposure settings in order to capture the entire tonal values of the scenery that is in front of you. All these situations can be handled and the final photo can be properly exposed. That means all the, the areas of the photo are properly exposed. There is no clipping to the left or to the right. This means in the darkness or in the highlights by using a technique that, which is called HDR. So I wanted to do this short introduction just to give you some, uh, some hints when you should use this technique, HDR photography. And now let's break the summary of the, uh, of the things that are following. First, I will show you how you plan. What are the technical steps that you need to do in order to take a photo that it's going to be an HDR, uh, an HDR image? For that, I will step indoors because it's very easy to explain this when you have to capture the, the darkness that is inside the room and also details outside the room that you see uh, outside the window. And then I'm going to do some short edits on some photos that I did to learn how to merge the photos in Lightroom and how to think about editing an HDR photo. So first let's talk about the technical steps you need to do in order to uh, do the set of photos that I used for HDR. Now, usually the term is bracketing. Bracketing refers to a feature or a function on your camera that allows you to set your camera in such a way that will automatically do a sequence of photos. The only thing you set is the differences in stops of light between the photos. That's it. You just press the shutter then, you set the exposure for the first photo and then the camera will modify only the exposure time, the aperture and the ISO will remain the same and it will um, modify the exposure time so that the differences in stops of light are met and the camera automatically takes all the photos. What you do is activate the bracketing function and you set the number of photos. Usually you can take up to uh, you can take two photos, three photos, five photos, seven photos. I found out that on my mirrorless Canon EOS R, I need only two shots to get all the tonal values in a scene. I didn't need it uh, more than two shots, never. So I don't know, maybe there will be a situation. Now, another big plus, because it's a mirrorless, when I half press the shutter, the camera will show me the second uh, photo, the second exposure, plus its histogram. So this is a big thing because the minute I have pressed the shutter, I know exactly how the photo will look like. The first photo, I already see it on my screen, have pressed the shutter, I see the second photo, I see its histogram, I know if I have to do more than uh, just two brackets to have an HDR image. Let's get into Lightroom to show you how to merge photos and how do you think about uh, the editing process. Now we're in Lightroom, I have three uh, HDR photos and let's start with the first uh, two. You click the first one, then control click the second one or the, the entire sequence, you have to have that selected. Right click, 
photo merge and go for HDR. And then the Lightroom does everything. Now, there are a few options here. I will suggest to leave auto align checked. Auto settings, I don't recommend to have them check. Uh, Deghost, it, it depends. If you have elements that are moving from um, one frame and the other, you should do a deghosting. But I just, uh, I just leave it to none. I know exactly what I'm doing. Create stack, I don't want to create a stack. Um, this means that Lightroom will automatically group the raw files into uh, a stack, raw files, the sequence that is associated with this uh, HDR. I don't do this. And then you just click merge. And depending on how many photos you have, their resolution, and how powerful your computer is, this will take longer or shorter. Now, this is the photo that I did. Let's go into the develop mode. This is the merge photo. I will very, very quickly go to the previous photo. I just want to show you something. In the exposure, if I'm dragging the exposure all the way to the left, you see I'm gaining, I'm going to minus five. And then of course to the plus to plus five. In the case of the, the HDR image, we are having minus 10 and plus 10. So you're getting, including zero, 21 stops of exposure, which is more than enough. You can do whatever you, you want with this. Now, what I suggest you to do is not go with that um, old HDR look the first time when HDR came out on the market that all the photos have the, the, the shadows blown out, the, the highlights were dropped. So you still have to edit the photo in a way that it looks natural. And by that I mean don't alter the entire shadow, uh, the, the, all the shadows in, a, in, in the image by dragging the shadows or, um, or dragging the highlights down. Think about the regions that you want to edit. In this case, first of all, we need to um, do a balance of the, of the regions. You see in histogram, we have a spike over here, which is um, represented by our um, mud, because I'm photographing muddy volcanoes. And then I have another area, which is represented by the sky. Now, let's just use a gradiated filter, drag it from the top down, and use the exposure to drag it down. Now, what I want to do is create a balance between these two uh, areas. Now, I've dragged the exposure all the way down, and now I'm hitting new and creating another gradiated filter, and I'm bringing the exposure just a tiny bit up. And then I'm introducing a radial filter for the area over here, which is the actual uh, volcano, and I'm increasing the exposure some more. Okay, something like this. Uh, the, the red that you see here, it's uh, the way Lightroom announces me that over there, there is clipping. I can very easily take the highlights, take them down just a tiny bit, and because it's an HDR, I know I have all the information there. That is the beauty of HDR. You don't have to drag the shadows and think about, oh my God, I'm gonna have noise in the shadows, or you don't have the, to drag the highlights down and think about, well, it's gonna be like a gray spot because there will be no detail over there. No, that's the point of HDR. You are doing this to have detail um, on the entire uh, surface of the photo. Now I'm going to use the spot removal tool to, to just remove some of these uh, elements over here, some flares. Now let's grab and increase, add a, basically create a contrast curve with the tone curve. Okay, something, something like this. And drop the highlights just a little bit. Raise the shadows on the entire image. Now, because we are dealing with the sunset, introducing cold, um, cold colors in the image maybe will not look that, that interesting, but let's see. In the shadows, I just want to test and see if a little bit of blue looks okay. 
and then in the highlights I will introduce more orange and let's see quickly before and after yeah I think I think it looks it looks okay now let's check very very quick this is the image I started with and this is the resulted image and as you can see it's it's completely changed now probably in Photoshop I'm uh, I will remove these people from uh, from here but for Lightroom I think this is enough with the editing Be especially because I just want to show you the way you think about uh, editing HDR I, I don't want to spend too much on the, on the photo let's click these two and now let's use the shortcut control H to do this okay click merge this is the HDR going to the develop now I have some silhouettes over here and the sky looks looks really really well but let's drag the let's see I'm, if I'm dragging the exposure a little bit to the right um, I just want to see the details over here now you can compensate by dragging the highlights but sometimes you see if I'm going like this the image kind of looks fake it, it has something that it's not okay so what I'm gonna do is because it affects also the highlights in the ground not only the highlights of the sky so I will use a gradient filter and I will drag it all the way here you see now I'm covering also uh, this hump of mud this small hill of mud from the right that is the reason for which you I couldn't use ND graduated filters in this case so what I'm gonna do if I'm taking the exposure down I'm affecting as you can see um, the, the the mud area as well I could go I could go and increase the shadows just a, a little bit and I could fix in in some way this problem and then I could go with the highlights a tiny bit down maybe raise the blacks a, a, a little bit okay so let's let's check the uh, the initial image looked like this and now I'm having exposure in both areas that are and the exposures are looking really well now what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of contrast to the image um, drag the exposure down a tiny bit on the entire image increase the shadow just a tiny bit and then I'm uh, highlighting the focus of this image which is this area with a radial filter okay I'm, I'm using something like this you don't have to have huge differences okay and then add a little bit of uh, vibrance to the to the image again let's check the initial image and the quickly edited one as you can see I'm adding I'm editing very fast it's not something that uh, I stay uh, and edit a lot let's select the last images control H and waiting for the preview then click merge and then let's do the editing very quickly okay let's go into the develop mode now the thing that I didn't mention is um, are things that I'm doing with all my photos when I'm editing that is remove chromatic aberration enable profile correction adjusting the sharpening but I'm skipping all this just to just to have uh, everything th that is related to um, to uh, HDR now let's take a look again at the histogram you see the histogram here and then you see another spike over here and if you move your cursor uh, there are about uh, one two about three stops between these two areas so let's just drag a gradient filter down like this and let's take the exposure and now you take a look at the histogram you see how it all comes together in one one single spike yeah that that looks really well you can also drag down the the highlight now the highlight looks looks pretty bad if I'm dragging it down let's rotate this a little bit more now okay I, I dragged the highlight because this area was too bright and now let's uh, let's increase the shadows because I want to bring back some details over here okay now now I fix that area now I'm gonna use a brush 
and I'm going to take the exposure of the brush um, down a little bit and I'm going to darken this bottom area. Now I'm going to reset the exposure and, and just a tiny bit darker. I don't want to have it too dark. And then just a simple radial filter in this area. And uh, increase the exposure just a tiny bit. As white balance, let's see cloudy how it looks. Shade, shade looks a lot better. Okay, and again, let's see if I can introduce um, some blue in the shadows or maybe some blue that is shifted a little bit towards magenta because it's sunrise, we do have those, uh, those tints of color. Yeah, somewhere around here. So if I would have to add these photos and not include them in the tutorial, maybe I would stay a lot longer on these images and I would try to make them more, uh, more interesting. The purpose of this, um, of this short editing tutorial is to give you a starting point in terms of what HDR is, how to do it, how to edit for HDR. So I'm adding another radial filter and I'm increasing a little bit the exposure and the feathering and the image before and after you get the idea. That was it for today. I hope this beginner guide to HDR photography in terms of how to plan the HDR photo, when do you need this technique, and then how to merge the photos and how to plan the editing. I hope all this information was useful. If you had something to add or if you just have a question, use the comment section below. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, keep on photographing. It's the only way to get better. Bye-bye.